Hey guys, what's going on? Taraku here, and I hope you're all doing great. Today, I want to jump in here and talk about retaliation and avenging gear. But before we do that, I got something kind of funny. I want to show you guys a picture um, that's kind of cursed. Uh, you may get a little bit of a laugh out of it. But as you can see, I don't have glasses. I got a haircut today, and I trimmed my beard. So looking a lot different. I actually came out of the after taking a shower, and my wife said, wow, you look a lot different. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think I need to trim the whole beard off, just leave like a mustache, then come out and she'll definitely see a different version. I'm going to show you guys a, a cursed image of quite a, quite a few years ago. Um, I, I was trying to stream back then, but this image right here, I don't really want it to be shown around. So you guys just keep this between us, okay? <laughs> that does not look like me no more. I look very different. I used to work at UPS there, but sometimes you look back on pictures and you wonder, dang, did I think I was cool? Because I did. I did think I was cool there. But thought I was cool back then. But I'm going to show you guys something today that actually is cool as far as raid goes. And that is talking about retaliation versus avenging gear. So um, I, I talked about it this a while back on a different video. But I want to go over it more because there's a champion in the current, well, the current Fragment Fusion champion. Um, Fragment Summon champion, better yet, because he's not actually a fusion. You don't have to collect other champions. Just collect his fragments and then you get this dude. So I already made a video talking about him. I'll link that up top if you guys want to go see it. Now, granted, that video is not a guide. It is just kind of like my opinions and overview on this champion just from testing him. Now, he does still have this outline on the crossbow. I don't know if it's like that on the the live servers or not. Um, it doesn't really matter. Just uh, actually, yeah, it kind of does. But either way, we're <laughs> move past that tie. Come on. Um, all right. So retaliation versus avenging. So I showed you the guys that champion. I actually had him built in retaliation for the arena specifically. And it's because I had him in reaction gear. But let me go in here to the doom tower real quick i have two different skull crowns each of them built well let me show you guys first i have two different skull crowns each of them are built in different gear so this one's in avenging gear the damage they deal doesn't matter um and this one is in retaliation gear this one is marked with attack and this one's marked with defense so the defense one is the avenging the attack one is retaliation so attack retaliation okay got to remember that so attack is retaliation uh let's go ahead and go here i want to show you guys something so attack is retaliation We'll be able to tell by the damage done. Um, this is something very important to keep in consideration when you're building champions with either um, avenging or retaliation gear. Granted, when you do either one of those pieces of gear, either one of those sets, they do have different um, conditions that need to be met, which I'll go over that in just a second. But this is the important part, okay? So we're using the A1, 3,400, 4,000. So about 4,000 damage per hit. Um, but then here, if she decides to counterattack, she may just die. Um, 26 and 27. That's a big chunk of damage missing. So why is that? Well, when you counterattack, you actually deal less damage. 65% of the normal damage is what you deal when you counterattack. Okay. Now there was a little, little known information not too long ago that came through. It got pushed in in a patch and it was, it was like a small line in the text because I don't think avenging set always worked like this. So this is the avenging skull crown. The other skull crown did 4,000 damage the first time, 2,000 damage the second time. This one was 5,300. And then boom, she gets hit. Hopefully she counterattacks. Well, only counterattacks from the crits. So it may be a little bit of a challenge to actually get a counterattack to come off of the skull crown because she is wearing avenging. So that is a big difference between avenging and retaliation. Avenging only procs from enemies' critical hits. But 4,700 damage. Let's see if we actually get a crit from the enemy. So in PvE type content like this, it may not be the best to wear avenging because obviously it's going to be difficult to get a crit to land on your champion. But I'm going to get it here in just a few seconds. Um, she's doing about 5,000 damage. But to get my point across, I need a, I need them to crit me so I can show you guys what's actually going to happen. More or less, the Avenging Gear does not have any damage reduction. So this 5,000 damage I'm dealing now, when the enemy hits me, it's going to be the exact same thing. So if we don't get a crit here, apparently they, they have terrible crit rate. So somebody's at, somebody at Playroom is gearing their champions with low crit rate. Um, I'm not for sure if they watched my videos, but I guess not. All right, guys, so we're going down here. Um, I'm War ZLO. I bet you he gears his Hegemons with crit rate, right? So I'm going to put my Skull Crown in here with Necrit just in case these uh, Hegies um, are in stun gear or provoke so she doesn't get messed up. Um, but pay attention to how much damage is dealt, all right? So right here, we get hit with the ability. Doesn't crit. Hopefully this crits. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. Okay, counterattack. Perfect. So 11, 14, and 10. 11 in the middle, 14 on the side, and 10 on the other side. Now, hopefully Necrit doesn't kill anybody. Oh, my God. She's just hitting too hard. She's hitting too hard, okay? But this is okay because we'll be able to see here, as long as she doesn't crit, um, hits for 9,000, okay? So the damage is staying basically exactly the same as it was before, right? So the Avenging Gear does not get damage reduction based when you crit. It only does proc, though, when you get hit with a crit. So 
that brings up the point. Okay, well, and the same thing works with Rourke. Rourke, unfortunately, because Retaliation Gear specifically says that if an ability or well, your default skill basically does 65% of the total damage from your default skill. Now, Rourke, I mentioned this in my video, but this is technically not his default skill, right? It's his default countering skill, but it's not his default skill. So I thought it would work like deal full damage with the counter attack and doesn't seem to unfortunately but there's definitely situations where you would use each one avenging set is honestly my favorite set to put on skull crown for the arena because as you can see if we're going against hegemon well for defense specifically if you're going against hegemons if you're going against well any team the enemy is going to be gearing their champions with 100 percent crit rate ideally right so if you're using skull crown on a defense team the enemy brings in a champion who is crit capped your skull crown has a very high percentage chance of actually counterattacking the enemy and doing really good, right? Because skull crown one proxy unkillable. She's probably my well, she is definitely my favorite champion to put avenging gear on. And honestly, the only champion I've ever put avenging gear on, but she's so good that it makes it worth it. And I mean, the avenging gear comes from dragon anyways, right? So you're probably going to be farming dragon for speed gear, for lifestyle gear, for toxic sets, whatever it may be. So you're gonna get some extra avenging pieces from there so you might as well throw it on your skull crown now talking about this skill text here it doesn't specifically say that it deals full damage and doesn't take any reduced damage unfor uh, like anywhere that i notice um but it also doesn't specifically say like the retaliation set says that damage is reduced that it's being dealt okay like i said we had a patch note a while back that said avenging does deal full damage um, so that is a nice little difference, differentiating factor there. Now with Rourke, I was testing out some avenging stuff as well. The issue was though, is that he's spirit affinity. So he's weak in the arena to a lot of the magic affinity nukers, a lot of nukers in general, right? Also has no one killable, but if you put him in all reaction gear in the bottom, if I did have that, it'd make him so good. And he would have to go with retaliation because of reaction accessories wouldn't allow, well, it would prevent the enemy from critting. So when they actually activated, the enemy couldn't crit me. So then... Retaliation would be the only thing that could proc. Now, besides that, I do want to mention a few other champions who are super, super good when it comes to wearing retaliation gear and kind of some other areas that I use it on because now with Rourke being a fragment champion, I think a lot of you are probably going to want to start farming some more and more retaliation gear, which unfortunately does come from the uh, not so popular area, which is Ice Golem, but it's a solid set along with Reflex for the Infinity Gauntlet teams. Crit rate set's not even bad. Um, resistance has its niche uses granted with bommel which i don't think anybody's gonna be farming him very much um, unless we get some fast teams 100 auto going he's gonna be a pain but some other champions that are definitely very fun well specifically i'll do, give you two that are really good amazing in retaliation and then a few other options okay so the first one is vrask all right vrask is an absolute amazing champion in retaliation gear i'll actually link to a video i did on him a while back probably the best champion there is in retaliation gear the reason why is because when he counterattacks from the retaliation gear, if he's geared to crit, then he heals all allies by 10% of his max HP when inflicts a critical hit. So as long as you have him a lot of HP, 100% crit rate, doesn't really matter. You don't have to do a lot of damage with him. You just need to get those counterattacks happening. And he is a faction war carry for orcs because he gets crit, no problem. Counterattacking 10% of his max, max HP. That's a pretty big chunk of healing to everybody on your team. And it's A2, it doesn't matter if it's A1 or A2 because everything heals him. Granted his A1, does give him that turn meter fill which is actually really really good another champion is vizier now granted vizier is a little less like impacted by retaliation in my opinion now that you can turn off these other two abilities used to on the clan boss retaliation was like an absolute game changer because you couldn't preset the ai so if you want vizier to stack up the poisons or whatever on the boss and you didn't want to have to manual it until so many turns on the road like forever then especially if you're going against like the spirit affinity clan boss where vizier is weak affinity then you have to use retaliation gear essentially because it, he just wouldn't stack up very well without it nowadays you can actually turn off these a2 and a3 abilities turn them on auto and he'll only use his a1 so he's kind of losing value from retaliation gear with that change but there's still another champion that I actually used a while back. And honestly, this goes for any champion. If you're using a budget unkillable team and you're slow champion, just throw them in retaliation gear. If you throw them in retaliation gear, I actually used um, Faceless in my budget unkillable team at one point because I had retaliation gear. It was really slow. It had attack percent boots, but Faceless hits kind of hard. And this extra hit is not an extra turn. So he wasn't removing the unkillable from him. And it actually made sense. He actually did a decent amount of damage. It's not like the best champion to use retaliation gear on by no means. And it doesn't make sense anywhere else in the game. But 
Faceless is a champion who I don't use a ton outside, like in much content other than Faction Wars. So throwing him in the clan boss as my slow champion only needed damage. I had all the buffs taken care of, the debuffs taken care of. So throwing him in there with retaliation gear actually worked out really good. And it was kind of like a, a semi built in counterattack set for that champion because as a slow champion on the budget unkillable team, you don't want to want to have any heals. So you can't really run the masteries. Well, you want very limited heals because you can't really run the masteries that heal your champion so then you can counterattack. So retaliation gear was really the only way that I could actually get reliable counterattacks off. Now, I did mention Rourke, which Rourke is another champion who I think is going to be very solid with retaliation gear. He's not an orc. I said Rourke, not <laughs> sounds like orc, doesn't it? Um, but he's going to be good with retaliation gear. Obviously, counterattack on his A3 ability. I don't think that's going to be like the go-to meta main build for him, but it's going to be legit. It's going to be solid. It's definitely going to get some use. Re with um, the arena build I was talking about with reaction accessories, retaliation main set, I think it could be pretty fun. I think it's going to be the best arena defense team that he could be in personally, um, but definitely he's going to be an interesting, interesting champion to try out. But to be honest, anybody with an interesting effect on their A1 ability, even Yannicka, could make sense being in retaliation gear because she has this A1 that places leech. So if you were to bring her in the clan boss, then when the clan boss is hitting, she's going to make sure this leech stays up basically all the time. She can do it very, very well as it is, but it's going to be even more consistent, even better now if the clan boss is hitting and has a 35% chance to apply to activate Yannicka's counterattack. Just an example, but literally anybody who has an effect on their A1 ability that's beneficial can work amazing in retaliation gear now like i mentioned avenging gear versus retaliation avenging keeps all the damage from the counterattacks much harder to activate especially in pve content um, pvp content it's very very good though activates significantly more because what is it a 45 percent chance i think versus a 35 percent chance and you wouldn't think you feel it but you definitely feel it this feels like it activates majority of the time it's not quite majority of the time but it's, it's pretty close and this one's 35 percent of the time but it's it does no matter what okay now it does less damage so they got pros and cons right definitely pros and cons between the two different sets but definitely guys let me know who you use either one of those sets on with Rourke being a fragment fusion champion i do think that the retaliation sets maybe even the avenging sets are going to start getting more and more traction more and more popularity because people are going to be trying them out finding new champions maybe maybe not though maybe he just gets fused and people forget about him but we're going to find out soon enough guys i hope you enjoyed this video thank you all very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one